Dear Heavenly Father, we entrust this time and this conversation to you. Help us understand what you want us to know. Help us to grasp the truth. Help us live it according to your will. We entrust this time and this conversation to you, our mother, as you said, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Are you saying quite a dog again? Again. These theories, the portion of 
can be an assertive persuasive force. They look like the bad people talk in big words and they sound really smart. But from their opinion, the science can tell it. So you can, it is nice to look at things and break it down and say, okay, yeah, this, this graph, this chart, they can look at this chart and say, good, bad. There's not a good here that overwhelms the bad, and therefore it's going to work okay. No. And this scientific mentality, which is concerned with the order of technical and economic activities, mm-hmm. on the basis of calculation of resource or costs, using their effects. Right? When you're dealing with analyzing the market or economics or your budget, it is good to be able to analyze things and say, okay, let's figure some things out. We're talking about the morality, not the budget. These seek to provide the break with the constraints of altruistic and arbitrary morality. The obligation which would then ultimately be dehumanizing. So he's saying, you know, their intention of this theory might not be good, I might not get it. So what they're trying to do is they're saying, don't just be doing. We follow where and wrong and simply from the rules, because we're following God. And so if you're stuck following the rules, not because you're following God. Not because those are from God, because the rules are in place. Why are we thinking about the rules? That can be dehumanizing and then you know, you and ending up in a bad place mentally and what's right or wrong. Because if any of the authority is making the law and saying now this is good, this is bad, this is where this is where you have Nazi Germany, right? They were used to obey orders, that was the rule. It didn't matter what the order was, but the rule was, as long as it was the rule. Right? It was just that was the defense of the Nazi uh, officers trying to give out how to obey. I was listening to the rules. The Pope said, it's okay, you know, it's good to, to, to go beyond. You know? And some of, the, some of the people in their theories of trying to figure out this analysis of the bad, if they mean well, but they're still wrong. <laughs> These theories, however, he said, are not faithful to the church's teaching. They're wrong. When they believe they can justify the morally good, deliberate choices of kinds of behavior contrary to commandments that by natural law. Usually, it's, it's going to be sexual ethics. Obviously, people tend to do this. With, you know, I can divorce my husband, I can sleep around with my girlfriend, I can. Because I'm ultimately, there's not a portion of the good that happens. These theories do not claim to be, that's false, let's be clear, it's false. <laughs> <laughs> These theories do not claim to be grounded in Catholic moral teaching, tradition. Look at that bit in this thing about the casuistry, trying to assess the best ways to achieve the good in certain situations. None of that's true with this casuistry, in certain only cases in which the law is uncertain. Thus, the validity of negative moral precepts of life's exception. So I thought the question. Have you heard this term? Casual Street? No, I have not. I didn't tell you. <laughs> it's, a basic, it's, a, it's a basically a fancy way of saying what do you do with hard moral cases? And so the Jesuits were very famous for this. So if I do the word called Jesuit. It's a very complicated moral case. You try to figure out the most complicated moral case as possible, where things get really complicated. So, for example, you are obligated to go to mass every Sunday. What happens if this is a bad example? Um, but so they would make a, a story, and they would say, in this case, what do we do? So Jane has PTSD because she was. Harmed in the army, and every time there's a loud noise, she she has a flashback. And Father Bill, who says mass, uh, has a loud noise, it tends to boom, and scares her to think of bombs. What do we do in her case? You know, so look at it, looking at the case situation rather than the principles. Looking at the cases, then to be helpful, a trained young priest kind of analyze and apply things well. Um, so I have a book of cases which has a story and say, okay, what, what would you do in this situation? And you okay, okay, I'll do this, and you leave the answer, okay, oops, I missed these three things, okay, now I'm back. You know, it's helpful. 
It's helpful to train yourself. It's helpful for two of those cases where it's been very, very complicated. That was a good example. We get to get better examples of, you know, um, you know how, how, to, how to kind of restore property that was stolen, or what to do in case when you have um, Job marries Jane, and they're married for they three months. He goes off to war. They think he's dead. So she marries Steve. 20 years later, he comes back and finds he's been alive. Now, what do you do? Because technically they're, they're married, but the the house of the general lived for three months, and now you have this whole thing, you have this big mess where who's married to who, and how do you figure this out? We don't get right and wrong, and the kids have everything else. You know, that's that the kind of thing you deal with this case by case basis to figure out, okay. But these are particular cases. They're meant for the hard cases, the extreme cases, that can be good. Now, the bad side of this way of thinking. People trying to play the way. So you often find this being referred to, you know, this is, is the precursor to what we call today's pastor in air quotes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So in your case, it's okay because, well, you would be really too hard for you to go in. In your case, <laughs> it's okay because, you know. And so if you're doing it this way, the right way, what you're doing is if you're figuring out the proper way to apply the law. And sometimes there will be, there will be things that are additional principles when the law won't apply in the case. You know, like the person with PTSD might be excused more than that. You know, because it becomes a, it becomes a, a, a kind of physical impossible and moral impossible. Um, where somebody, you know, if they can't function on the mass, they can physically get here. But they've been making about to get there truly be so disorienting and so horrible to them physically that they can have an excuse. I mean, depending on what talk about PTSD and how bad it is. If it's just they're uncomfortable, maybe not. If they're in a panic attack to walk to a church, that might excuse them. It would be like Yeah, 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 basically. Um, and so that may, that's, that's a case where, in your case, it's true and still principles apply. This thing, this false kind of pastoral, just saying, is, is finding ways to get around the law based upon things we make up. And very often, this is what Kazimierz Street was taken to be. And so you were being Jesuit, it was people from many clever ways and excuses that sounded good for why it's okay. In your case, you can do these things. Now, in your case, you can contraceptive, sleep with your boyfriend, or because, well, otherwise you're going to leave you and then it's more important you stay together and whatever it might be. I mean, the so Pope's saying is that a good way to use the matter of A good way is looking at, looking at cases to apply them well. It says the difference, though, between this and the proportionalism is this kept the principles intact. This said the principles are always black and white. The principles are always true. How we apply that might take some thinking and figuring out, because life's complicated, people are not complicated. The principles are always black and white. People are not. And you get to this kind of thinking, the false kind of thinking, what it says is the principles are never black and white. The principles differ depending on you and who you are. So does that difference make sense? Steal and claim to love God. 
because the, they are themselves unloving acts. And so when Paul says this, it's not, it's not weakening them, but it's often pretended it's doing. He's actually explaining, explaining why they're so important, why they matter, and why they can't change. Love of God and one's neighbor can't be separated from the preservers of the commandments to cover it. This has been renewed by what Jesus Christ and gave the Holy Spirit. It's an honor, which is characteristic of Christians, to obey God without a man, to accept and pardon the cross consequence, if the holy men were in the Old Testament. For considered such, well, then it's very holy, because they gave their lives out to perform this bad act, which against the faith of virtue. 77. Nor are all the rational criteria for right and wrong decision, and to figure out. See what we're back with, what we're trying to think about. The theories mentioned above take into account the intention and the consequences, what happens afterwards, what happens from the decision of the action. Certainly, there is need to take into account both the intention, as just forcefully insisted in terms of being described by the Pharisees, described in great detail, sort of practice about paying attention to the heart. And the good that obtain the little boy that's a to grab. Responsible demands as much. But the consideration of the consequences of the attention is not sufficient. There's the moral quality of concrete for choice. This is important. Why you're doing something can change what you're doing to do a bad thing. From fast takes a little to lose weight, it's not going to make it over. From fasting, you know, to trick people into thinking that I was a holy person, if I could steal from them. It's not a good thing. My intention can change what I'm doing. So, Andy, you can imagine that. You can then focus, focus on what happens by doing these things. Those things are, are, are common sense. Important, necessary, but not enough. There's more. The way that the good is perceivable is the consequence of an action is not an adequate method. A determinant whether this choice or that concrete behavior is according to the species or itself, or the very bad is the person. So there, there is a way to look at it and say this kind of thing is always bad. This kind of thing is good. The perceivable consequence of part of the circumstances of the act. And which will take both less than gravity and black, nevertheless, cannot change small species. Okay, so this is going back to a long discussion of morality. A good intention could not make a bad thing good. Right? I can't say I'm going to kill you for a good reason. I'm going to lie for a good reason. It doesn't become good because of a good reason. But a bad reason would make a bad thing worse. The circumstance can't make, can't make this good or bad, but it can, um, it can make it a worse thing or a less worse thing. It can change the degree, so, I, so it can make it a, a, an even worse thing to do or a less worse thing or so bad thing. So, if I deliberately kill you, now that that's all I've been saved, I still kill you. It's still a bad thing for me. It's just less good if it's only for some reasons. Or, or less bad. It's still bad, but it's less bad. <laughs> right? It's just like saying, you know, shooting you in the head and killing you quickly is less bad than torturing you first. It's true. It is true. But it goes back. Forever, everyone has a difficulty or rather the impossibility of adding all the good and evil circumstances as such effects by the moral of one act. And it exhausts the rapid population not possible. How then can we go establishing proportions which depend on the measure of the material and 
How could an obligation justify the basis of a debatable calculation? We don't always know what's going to happen in the future, or what's going to happen in the summer. How can we use this as a criteria for the event? Well, you can't. 78. And it's 120. The morality of the human act depends primarily and fundamentally on the object, rationally chosen by the will. As borne out in the analysis of Alice today and Thomas Aquinas. In order to grasp the object of the act, specifies the act orally. It is necessary to place oneself in respect of the act in person. Some people um, confuse the object of the act with the description of the physical action. Um, what makes stealing different than taking something accidentally is not the description of the physical movement of taking my thing in my pocket. Same physical description. But what I'm choosing is a different thing, kind of thing. You go look the same. If I go you know, to, to, to my parents' house from the TV, I'm doing that because I'm mad that I'm going to try to show that I'm not talking to them. You know. The description of, of that heady behavior is not going to be sufficient to so I'm sort of actually choosing it. The object is it simply took money. The object is I stole. It sounds like you're describing the true intention. Because it's the person's and private intention inside your head. Well, the police are stealing or not. Well, it's a little, little different. It's their motivation. Well, and this is why it's like people get confused. This is why, this is why people get confused. Um, what he's saying is you have to know what, what they're trying to do. Because certain things can look the exact same simply from the outside. From the inside, though, there are different things being done. Even though they look the same. It's not the same thing, though, as this. Um, sometimes these things are part of the same thing. It's, it's like that's the sin, and number two is the justification for the sin. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so exactly. So this, this would be the justification for why it's okay. This would be what you're doing, what's happening. Yeah. So I'm stealing because I want to make sure you need I'm stealing because I want to kind of rob the give my own. I'm stealing because I don't like to deserve it. No, I'm still stealing. And so it's not a description physically that he took my equipment in his pocket. It's what's he doing. Right? A, 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 a kiss could be adultery, it could be an act of love for a spouse, it could be, you know, it could be very different, different things. But you're still trying to say physical thing. So what is it? Does depend on what's happening on the inside, the person's actually doing it, shooting. Even if they have a different intention of what, why they're doing it. You know. Does that make sense? The object of the act of will is in fact a freely chosen kind of behavior. To the extent it is conforming the order of reason to cause the goodness of the will, to perfect its moral. It disposes us to recognize the ultimate end of the good and moral law. Because our freedom is here, to bring us to God and help us to go to heaven. And because we're in such a way that when we choose good things, we become good ourselves. Now we're to choose to prove that we need God's help and God's grace. We, we perfect ourselves through our actions and through God's help. Their actions are unnecessary. And so when we choose well, this leads to God, uh, to the order of reason, or this is truly reasonable, to seek heaven. It's not reasonable to seek help. So therefore, doing the good thing is always the order of reason. It's always irrational to sin. Now it's happening because of the original sin. No, no, we confuse, we focus on 
the immediate pleasure we're experience, the immediate good we're going to grasp. There's a lot of action, right? I mean, if you look at it from the perspective of the big picture, to go have an affair is not rational. It's tempting sometimes because we're focused upon the immediate in front of us. But it's not rational, it's, it's stupid. It would be nice if every sin like, gave you a third degree burn so that you had like an immediate consequence. Right. Like a, an immediate punishment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of the reason why, why parents are supposed to punish their children. It's to try their wills and help them to know these things are bad. Because we, then we can, we're older and we, we, we don't have that help. But we must live the right according to reason in a rational way. But the priest doesn't want to start a group called Thanks for the Spanx. It's like talking in class about Spain everybody at school, even in high school, the principal Spain. Talking in class to get that kind of worry because I'll be back and I ain't crying for a year. So it's like they must have gotten used to it. They leave the room, I gotta talk. <laughs> My grandma said they used to, she was eating an orange one day in class and sharing it. They made her kneel on rice all day Ooh. long. The next day. Without like, pull up, uh, roll up your jeans and kneel on the rice. It's, <laughs> some of those things are probably excessive, yes. <laughs> Some people are really good, that's true. Some people are not. It's not a mistake to Definitely you have to remember the purpose of the punishment is because you're bigger than the children and you're mad. It's to train the heart of the room. And if spanking is not doing that job, and obviously we did a different punishment. I know. <laughs> <laughs>
So this is what's so the remote little further down the road of why the proximate, the approximate end is again what I'm trying to achieve. That's close by what I'm trying to accomplish. Teaches, there are certain different kinds of behavior that are always wrong to choose. Because who's in that implied disorder of the world? That is the moral evil. And Thomas observes often happens men act with intention, but without spiritual gain, because he get lacks of the will. Let's say someone robs or defeats the poor. Even though the intention is in this case, yet right this is what was lacking. Consequently, not all evil done with the intention or the will is ever excused. There are those who say, why do evil to make up their condemnation is just? What we're trying to do when we choose is to become like God. And therefore, any of our certain things are always ever wrong to choose, always ever wrong to do, no matter what. It's never okay to murder in this mind. It's never okay to lie. It's never, there are some things that are always wrong. And the one that doesn't change um, is pretty good attention. Abortion is always wrong. It doesn't change. Um, so there are some things there. The reason why the intention is not sufficient, both the hands, but the correct choice of action is also needed. The human act depends on the object. Whether the object is capable of the order to God or not. If the purpose of my choice is to come to God, can I please God by offending God? Does that perceive make sense? No. If this is a fan God, I can't say what I want, I want to please him. I'm going to do so by fan. If this is against God's will and God's law and who God is, even if I'm intended to please God, I'm going to fan. You can't please God by fan. And so when there are things that are of themselves against God, as a nature, yet they're not capable of being ordered to God. It doesn't matter why I'm doing it. It's always wrong to choose it. The reason why the intention is not itself sufficient, but a correct choice of action is also ordered to you, is the human act depends upon its object. Whether the object is capable or not to be ordered toward God. One of those <coughs> And this brings about the affection of the person. An act is therefore good if the object is conforming to the good of the person, for God and for eternal life. But the good is not another for him. Christian ethics, which takes particular attention to the moral object, does not refuse to consider the intertelliology of acting as much as it's directly promoting the truth of the person. Retelliology is a fancy for saying the end, you're trying to achieve. There are certain things that are, are new things for me. But I recognize that it really is pursued only in the essential elements of human nature or respect. The human act, good according to its object, is capable of being ordered to its ultimate end, heaven for God, for eternal life. The same act that attains ultimate perfection, when the will actually does order it to God and charity. So it's capable of being ordered to God. And it is a word for God. So I'm capable of bringing order to God, we'll stop right there and do it. If it's capable, we'll do it, do it for our reasons, and do it in the right way. As the patron more often loads the confessor's teachings, as long as the word, it's not enough to do good works that need to be done well. For works to be good and perfect, it must be done for the sole purpose of pleasing God. Intrinsic evil. 
It's not, this is too good. You know, this is too evil to come. Why well, must therefore reject thesis? Campus of theological and proportionalist theories. Which holds that the problem qualifies only evil according to its species, its object. The deliberate choice of certain kind of behaviors is to fax. A proper duration of the intention which is stop. The tell the receivable consequence of the act while first concerned. Basically, what he's always saying is some things are always bad. End of story. There are some things that are always bad. Don't do them. So you can't say, well, it's okay in my case, or it's okay as long as I don't agree, or it's okay as long as the things happen out of it. Go back. Don't do it. The private life as an element for moral judgment is the offer of human action. He's kind of repeating himself here. It establishes whether it's capable of order to be the good of the good of the good of the this capability is grasped by reason of the very being of man. Consider the physical truth, they have to have relations. The motivation is finalities, which always have a spiritual dimension as well. Because our body and soul, our choices are always involved here and now in this life or the physical world. They're always going to involve our spiritual world, eternal life, and salvation. Because we're not just meat, not just animals. Precisely these things are the contents of natural law, has that word comes of personal goods, which serve the good of the person, good of, which is the person himself as perfection. These are the goods safeguarded by the commandments which point to Thomas and the whole natural law. Mm -hmm. I really want to talk on how the person is, is the inclination or desire to push to do the right thing. Love each other, care for each other, to not break the commandments. That's really the problem we are human beings. It's good for us, right? When, when you steal a lie and cheat, that actually harms your suffering around you. It's, it's bad for us. It's not just that God said so, you can't do it. It's, it harms us. <coughs> Reason attests that there are objects in the human act which are by really nature capable of the order of God. Because the bad can contradict who the person made his own image. Like, you can't please God or offer a reason if your final goal go to heaven. You can't please God by offending God. You can't reject God and who he is if you claim to follow him. You can't say I'm going to follow Christ by this way it's But that's the people who have to do that. I'm really following Christ in my case. But my intention is or Enough of these happen because well, you can't follow Christ by disobeying. There are acts which, in the church's moral tradition, have been termed intrinsically evil. They're evil of their own nature, of themselves, their own nature, nothing outside of them. In quite a part, the ultimate here depends on the act and the circumstances. The morality from the certain man's intention. These are important. The church teaches there exists acts where per se in themselves, and the of the circumstances always hears the wrong reason of their object. Murder is always wrong. Doesn't matter why you're doing it, or, or what hope it will happen, or where or where you're writing it. It's always going to be wrong. Right, self defense is murder. And I look like murder, but it's not really murder. That then you would be it's a different model. Murder is always wrong. The second man in council itself, when discussing the respect due to this human person, is not really examples of such acts. Not an exhaustive list, but examples. But that first calls to life itself any kind of homicide, kind of murder, genocide, abortion. If they need to alter your suicide. That implies the integrity of the human person, the mutilation, physical and mental torture, attempts to force the spirit. That really depends on the human dignity, such as human living conditions, 
arbitrary imprisonment, false imprisonment, deportation, slavery, prostitution, trafficking of children. Degrading this is a work for which labor is used to profit and not as for small persons. All these in life are disgrace as long as they affect the human civilization. They contaminate those who afflict them or those who suffer injustice. And they are engaged in the honor of the degrading. Liberally saving people or to other people as an employer or whatever I'm doing, I'm part of myself. With regard to the extremely evil act, and a reference to contraception, whereby the causal act is intentionally made infertile, politics teaches, although it is true that sometimes this law will tolerate lesser evil in order to avoid a greater evil, in order to avoid greater good. However, it's never lawful for the greatest reason to do evil good and common. In other words, which intend to direct this something to the right nature, conscious and moral order, and which therefore must be judged worthy of man, even though the intention is to protect and promote but for the individual family or society in general. What greater evil are they avoiding? Well, it's not, but politics is so, it depends on the context. The point of all this is, is this contraception is intrinsic evil, it's always wrong. What he's saying, though, is that people take a principle that's true, that at times can tolerate something for the state of a greater purpose. So, for example, if I'm in a confession and I'm working with this person, the person comes to me and says, Well, I'm contracepting and I killed somebody and I, I'm on the best one, and I'm, you know, maybe I'm going to maybe I'm gonna cover one thing at a time. Not because the rest don't matter. Because at that moment, first the job is to get them back to Christ. I can work with them slowly over time. They better worry about everything in that confession, or where everything will run them when I come back. It's too drastic. Too drastic. To change. Yes. Or if, if somebody um, is doing something bad but unknowingly, uh, or doesn't realize how bad it is, you might be working with a soul for a short time, so I'm not going to tell them at this point. So I can give them more information so that they be in a place where they receive that better. Because if I just tell them now all the information, maybe they'll hear it and they'll make even more sense. So, so our Lord Jesus Christ, before Pontius Pilate, was silent. Because to tell Pontius Pilate you're a sinner and you're bad, and you're, that's not going to do with Pilate. He's not going to understand. And so he was silent. He tolerated the evil. Because as soon as he told him the truth, actually greater evil happened. Right? Because now Pilate was doing things deliberately, purposefully, and knowingly, so they don't know. And so our Lord, until he was asked directly, and he was on the line himself, he was quiet. Because in the case of Pilate, to bring Pilate's law to that point was ready to change, actually caused greater evil. So Paul is saying there are times. But it might be okay to tolerate for a short period of time a lesser evil to what a greater evil. Or, for example, I'm going to go cut off my leg in relation to save my life. And it can't really to save my life. There was a debate. You have to get adaptation. It's mutilation, harm yourself. Well, no, not in this case. In this case, you're not attacking your leg, you're attacking your infection. Now, if you're just cutting your leg off because you're bored, don't do that. <laughs> Does that make sense? 
In teaching the existence of intrinsically evil acts, the church is set to teaching of sacred scripture. The Apostle Paul had in his face, don't be deceived. Either the immoral, or idolaters, or adulterers, or sexual perverts, or thieves, or greedy, or drunkards, or revilers, or robbers, but have the kingdom of God. Right. So people live this way, literally, and they're about the change, about being sorry for her. I'm going to happen. You, you can't live a life where you're attached to be a thief, robber, or a liar, or whatever it might be, and think, well, it's okay, God loves me. You're not going to heaven if you're living that way. This is correct and true. Well, if they accept Christ as their Savior, I'm saying that to you. <laughs> well, that's not what Paul says. I thought you should do that, you were covered for good. I've been quite a poll. That's what he's supposed to be. I've Christ's side, and that's what I'm going to have. That 25 is great. Yeah. If acts are intrinsically evil, a good intention or a particular circumstance can administer evil, but can't make it capable in order to, uh, they can't remove it. They remain, they remain evil acts. They're still bad. No. In themselves, they are capable of working for God and the person. As for actors are themselves sins, which they are working or are the sins themselves, who be beyond, which are now the work for which are sins. Thus, rights like theft, fornication, blasphemy, who would dare even if they know this, no longer sins, are more absurd for sin or justified. Right? You can't say, well, well I think reason for stealing. I had a good reason for shooting someone in the face. I need a parking spot. Well, that's a good reason. I'm on board. I have a man who had to shoot our brother born in Walmart since over her husband got down and said, Hopefully, they don't shut up. They didn't. Good. I came in her car a couple of times just to let her know she shouldn't be. There's something there, right? There's a parking spot. 
but not every reason. And so, it doesn't matter how big my reason is, is what the Pope said. Because this is always bad, in the end, this will always be bad too. But these things can't be in conflict. But because this is not going to lead toward God, uh, heaven, or the true good, however big my reason is, I'm going to go kill someone because I'm pretty convinced they're going to be an axe murderer and kill lots of people. I'm going to go commit murder now. I'm going to torture the, you know, the, the communist general and the nation of the war. I'm going to go, you know, commit an affair so I can get information from the from spy. Those things are not capable of being ordered for God. And therefore, my reason is not going to be a good reason. Does that make sense? So people claim it is, but it actually in itself is false. Even though it might look good, don't look good in, in a narrow window. Why do some people think that? Well, everybody tries to justify their actions. I think we all can do it. Everybody tries to justify things. <laughs> You know, basically it comes down to you want to do what you want to do. You want to do what you want to do. It's why I'm going to do it. 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 Yeah. It's okay for me, or it's okay in this case, or it's okay, you know, God doesn't care in my case because, whatever it might be. But you have to. Why? Because you're blue eyed. Because, you're blue because I caught you fair and square, you know, in a war. Because you ran away. Because you ran away. Because I'm bigger and stronger. And therefore, ha ha ha. Whatever it might be. What about a case of enhanced ter interrogation? You know, they, well, now there's a plot to kill thousands of people, and you have this terrorist. Can't do it. Um, a, a moral choice is always a bad thing. And so you do not torture somebody for the sake of good. You cannot commit evil for a good reason. Can't do it. It's wrong to do. Um, and the reason why it's wrong to do is a physical evil is always a less evil than a moral choice. Uh, so things like sleep deprivation, water pouring, you know, and I come from a, you know, I was in the military and we talked about these things. And uh, and so, uh, so uh, what I would say is there's probably a fine line. I mean, um, the Israelis are doing you know, this now. So. There's a couple, the Americans would have to. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably a fine line, but I would say you could probably make the prisoner uncomfortable and encourage him strongly. Mm -hmm. I couldn't but assume, what was that? I fit in a baby in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I that force <laughs> But as soon as you get to the point where we're treating them as long as human beings, as soon as you're harming them in real ways, as soon as you are uh, doing things that kind of order back to a God.
use of that then for a good reason. The dollar for the object is a source of morality. Remember, that's an explication, the explanation is explicit. Build around the covenant of that to share the virtues. The moral quality of humanity is dependent upon the fidelity of the manners as an expression of obedience and love. For this reason, we repeat again the opinion must be rejected as erroneous, which contains impossible to qualify as only evil according to species. The choice of certain kinds of acts, that's all, no, murder, fornication, contraception, adultery, lying, are always intrinsic evil. Okay. Um, that taken into account the intention which is the force of made which is how to receive any consequences. Without the determination which rather the person to say above, it would be impossible to affirm the existence of an objective moral order to establish a particular norm that common which should be by an exception. To be the detriment of turning the truth of the ability, the interest, his opinion as well. In other words, what he's saying is, as soon as we complain with cases and say, subjectively it's okay for you because of this reason, what you're doing then is you're going to account to affect the truth and right and wrong at all. If right and wrong only depend upon the individual person, how can we live together, work together, work together at all? How can we be one church? How can we all be kind of all the same God? But we can't. And so there must be things that, are, that it's not that I look at myself and say, okay, what's good today? Is there something good that I must make myself become one? Is there something that objective is tied I'm trying to perform my actions, my will, my choices, so that I can become one. And if this is not true, then how can we speak of truth beyond with ourselves? You can. It's the only way we're going to be able to have fraternity and society and a real church. And so if you say, well, in your case, it's okay if you need a reason, reason for it, than that person, the reason for slaving those people, the reason for imprisoning falsely those people, the torture those prisoners. Therefore, it's that, well, in that case, then, you're on the money. Make sense? 83. It's evident in the question of morality of humanities, in particular the question of whether there exists intrinsic evil acts. We find ourselves faced with the question of man himself, of his truth, what he's to be. The more consequence is flowing from that truth. By acknowledging and teaching the existence of the intrinsic evil humanity, the church remains faithful to the ethical truth about man. Right? Because we're made for God for eternity for him. Recognizing there are some things that will bring us there is necessary for us to understand what he's the human being first. She thus respects both the deity and his vocation. Consequently, she must reject the theories that forth above, which contradict this truth. As soon as someone denies there's something that's always bad, denies that the intentional is more thing, you have to be correct. I'm not saying start fights and to you know, beat people up. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but at least you can teach you if someone asks you a question, to be honest. These things are always bad. You can't do them, period. So it means the way you vote, the way you act, the way you live, it has to reflect this truth. And then he adds a special of the bishops. Dear brothers, they miss it. Hello, bishops. The Pope says, You must not be content to warn the faithful about error, dangerous, or ethical theories. It's not enough to say, Don't, don't, don't do these bad things. But first of all, show them by the splendor of the truth of Jesus Christ himself. Don't simply say, don't, don't, don't do bad things. Say, for Christ. Oh, Christ. Christ also. And in which truth man can understand fully and perfectly, through good actions, his vocation to freedom and obedience to the divine law, 
summarize the plan of all God made. This is what takes place to give the Holy Spirit for the truth, the freedom and the love. In Him, we're able to interiorize the law, make it part of ourselves, to receive it, live it, and what we're they force it to personal freedom. The perfect law, love, and love. I'm sure you've all seen this little phrase. At times, it can be you know, a little bit cheap, a little bit um, sentimental, a little bit uh, modern, a little bit silly, but it has truth to it. What would Jesus do? Right? And that people mean it in a modern way. You ask yourself, would Jesus lie, steal, slave, torture, and adultery? No. Tell them yourself. Would Jesus call us after abortion? No. Would Jesus steal a life? No. Well, therefore, don't you? If you want to follow him, follow him. Okay, it's fine. Well, that's the end of the prayer. That's the questions. It's a good place to stop. And the second chapter. Questions? Comments? Eighty four. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to come to you to think about it. Help us to understand your will in the law. Let really understand it to carry it out in all its own ways. You always say, I leave you for your Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was to the beginning, it is now.